What's up guys? I'm going to try to make this video as clear and concise as possible because I do have a tendency to ramble on and it kind of annoys me too. I don't mean to do it, I just accidentally talk too much. So basically I updated my BIOS from 2.C2 which is not listed on the B450M Mortar Max page anymore but it was basically in between 2B and 2C and it, it was on a GISA 1.1. And the reason I updated is not just to test the latest BIOS and to see if there's any kind of issues involved with doing the update. Sometimes uh, under vaulting and overclocking settings don't carry over at the exact same values. And that's what I wanted to investigate. And as well, there seems to be this gigantic gray area when it comes to AGISA change logs. So just as an example, AGISA 1.200 has its own built-in improvements within the AGISA itself and on the MSI web pages they don't tell you about it and then they go to 1.202 and well they, they've at least mentioned improved compatibility but the description is also lacking uh, it actually fixed USB dropout issues but they call it compatibility which I guess is still kind of the same thing but for people on Ryzen 5000 specifically having USB disconnection issues they, sh they could have added a bit more detail now of all places, if you go to the AMD Ryzen Twitter, they do mention the Agisa improvements. And this is what kind of annoys me because in 1.2, stability updates are, are included. And then the resizable bar, which they do mention, uh, they do mention for NVIDIA cards. And I had it working on my, on my weird in-between BIOS. I already had a resizable bar working with my AMD GPU, and it seems... 2C with a GISA 1.2 just added it for NVIDIA. But as you can see here, a GISA 1.2, no mention of stability. No mention of RAID driver updates, nothing. So that's why I updated, because there's this weird gray area where a GISA does improve certain functions of the CPU at a at like a, I don't know how to explain it, like a base level um, that is not explained in all of the BIOS update. So you could be on like SROC or ASUS. I don't know if they add it properly, if they add the full AGISA changelog, but your your update descriptions might be missing too. Like they might not be telling you what the AGISA itself does. So long story short, I updated and I wanted to report on the experience, exactly what I had to do and what was the outcome? Like what was the end result? Did I notice anything changing? And so basically, I have an undervolt at 4.2 gigahertz at a very low undervolt, like 1.125 volts in the BIOS, which comes out at about 1.081 under load. And then I also have a 4.4 gigahertz overclock I've tested at 1.25 volts, which is 1.2625 in the BIOS. And I tested, I, well, when you update the BIOS, um, you lose all your profiles and you lose all your settings. Be aware of that. You can't, like, even if you back them up, it's not guaranteed going to work that you can just reload the same settings because they change things in the BIOS menu itself where reloading your old BIOS settings might actually break something. Um, and I would advise against it. Do it all manually. So all I did was I took photos of my, over, like, my CPU overclocking section, my XMP, because I, I actually manually entered all my XMP stuff. If you haven't manually tuned your anything, it's not such a big deal. But if you have done any manual tweaking and you've set, it, set your own timings, you've used like Ryzen, um, one of the RAM, RAM tuners, then you'd want to take screenshots just so that you don't have to memorize everything. And as well, my fan curves, because obviously your fan curves get reset. So I took photos of all of that, updated the BIOS, and re-entered everything manually one-to-one. -one. So I re-entered it all exactly the same, and it all worked. There was no issue. And... I'm happy to report that the performance, everything just seems normal. So there's nothing to worry about. And as far as my update was concerned, if you're coming from a much older BIOS, your values might end up slightly different on the most recent BIOS. It depends how far back you're coming from because they do improve things and they do improve voltage um, response, like the way that the CPU is behaving. But as for me, I was on load line calibration three, uh, 1.125 volts. You know, I tested my 4.2 gigahertz undervolt all four. And then I tested my 4.4 .4 overclock all core. And both of them worked at exactly the same values and came within margin of error for Sign Bench R20. So I haven't done extensive testing. I only did this last night, but I just wanted to kind of share this experience for people wondering, should I do it? Is it worth doing? Um, I'm, you know, if you're, if you're just sitting there, you've got nothing better to do, and you're wondering, is it safe? 
Um, as far as my update was concerned with my Ryzen 5 3600, it was no problem. And just to show you a before and after, because I do have some results here. Oh, and resizable bar is still working as it should. Um, I think there is an issue with the 21.4.1 drivers that uh, Ancient Gameplays mentioned. So I have to update and test the, the latest drivers. But as you can see here, this was my T uh, 2C2 BIOS, my previous BIOS with a GISA 1.1. And the all core score was 3817 CB. And on the Agisa 1.202 BIOS, the all core was within margin of error, like literally within a few points, which can be simply having a monitoring tool open can cause that kind of variance. So, all stable, margin of error. And one interesting thing, this is what I wanted to show you, because a lot of people do wonder this, especially seasoned overclockers and, and you know, people that have been doing this for a while. Did the values turn out exactly the same? And I'm happy to report they did. Uh, the overclocking and undervolting values. So this was my 4.2 gigahertz undervolt, all core undervolt, and under load, this column, the, the second column is the minimum voltage. The load V droop with load line calibration three was 1.081 on my previous uh, Agisa 1.1 BIOS. So 1.081 and the peak voltages, like an idle after the test is finished or just while loading up programs in Windows, uh, we're 1.119 for the maximum. So minimum, maximum. These are the two important ones: the current and the val and the um, as you can see here, the current and the average change depending on what you're doing. So they're not really um relevant to this. It's mainly what we want to see is the minimum and the maximum. And take a look at this. This is with the new Agisa, 1.081, 1.119. So same BIOS settings, same result in Windows. I did not have an issue with my with my SV, my V core changing. And one other thing I noticed is um, maybe, this is a maybe, I'm not 100% sure on this, but slightly, if I open up my actual rating, slightly lower, even because I have the air, AC on, it's on a fixed temperature, slightly lower idle temperatures when I'm not doing anything and I have all my monitoring programs closed. Uh, I get like, it's, it's not really significant, maybe a 1C improvement. On average with with the minimums but current with all these monitoring tools open and with brave open it's it's basically the same uh no different there but i just wanted to share that because oh sorry i just wanted to share that because myself i was wondering like is it am i going to end up just making a problem for myself by updating i'm going to have like my my undervolt's going to become unstable or something and at the very least everything's just working as it should and i was able to run tests i ran a little bit of a SUS real bench to stability test it and it just seems to be functioning exactly the same in regards to stability and, and overall, you know, the BIOS settings I was using. So thanks for watching, guys. And I am I might do a overclocking, undervolting video in the future because uh, I've seen some Ryzen 5 3600 guides online on YouTube. And I'll, I'll just be frank with you. They were underwhelming and showing the wrong values. And they weren't explaining things to users properly. Um, like if you're doing a overclocking, undervolting guide... You don't just have the usage showing with no clock speed, relevant clock speeds while you're running benchmarks. You need to show people, especially if you're using PBO, but you need to show people what the CPU is doing so you can see how it's behaving and responding to your changes. But anyway, that's for another video. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And please like and subscribe if this helped you. See ya.